Hello and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today I am remaking one of my favorite soaps of all times and I've made this a couple of times before on YouTube but y'all seem to like remake videos. I'm going to be remaking my chocolate and lavender bars. Chocolate lavender and it's so funny I've said before I'm not a super lavender fan but it's growing on me. And I've learned that I like lavender when it's mixed with other scents. Sometimes it takes lavender to a new level for me. Well, this combination is, it's just so good. And it soaps really well. It does have some vanillin. It discolors, not too bad, to maybe a darkish tan, beigey color. It's definitely workable. So I love it. Y'all wanted to see when I remake it, so we're gonna do that today. For the colors, I'm gonna be using, um, to represent the lavender color, I have lilac mica. Don't have lavender, I have lilac. But isn't that a gorgeous color? This is from Be Scented, so that's gonna be the lavender purple color in here. And then for the chocolate, I have chocolate brown mica from Wholesale Supplies Plus. Um, and what I like to do in this soap is do a hanger swirl in the body, and then on top, I like to do little rosettes with the purple and do big Hershey Kiss type dollops on top in between with the chocolate color. So it represents the lavender and the chocolate. And I just, I can't really explain what it is about this combination that hits it for me, but it really does. Um, it's gonna be a goat milk soap and I will do milk and oil method like I do. I love making this soap. It's just one of my all time favorites. So come along and let's restock chocolate lavender or lavender chocolate, which is it? chocolate lavender. <laughs> I should know this by now. All right, let's make some soap. Right, we're back and it's additives time. Uh, I've got all my additives here and I'll get to those in a minute. But first I have my colors off to the side dispersed in some distilled water ready to go. And here are my piping tips. This is a Wilton 1M. It's just a star tip that I do my rosettes with. And then this is a Wilton 1A. And it's just a big open hole, and that's what I make my little Hershey's chocolate kiss type dollops. So those are the piping tips all off to the side. And now let's get to the additives. First and foremost, I have my goat milk that I have water discounted from my lye solution. And I'll tell you, when I say water discounted, if you're a new soaper, what that means is when you um, have a soap recipe and it gives you a lye volume and a water volume, whether it's 28%, 33%, whatever your lye to water ratio is, you got your lye, you got your water, or whatever liquid you're using. Well, you take your lye amount and you need to mix it with at least that much liquid. You can never go less, always have as much liquid as lye or a little more. And then I take the extra and that's my milk portion. So when I say water discount, that's what I'm talking about. And then this is the extra volume here and I'm going straight in the oils with it. I get asked a lot, some of you pro soapers out there already know all this, but <laughs> I do get a lot of questions when I say water discount for it, so that's what that is. So there's the goat milk. And now just to bump this over the top because it's so luxurious, I'm gonna add some heavy cream powder in there. So this will be such a milky goodness. This is a two tablespoon scoop. So two tablespoons of heavy cream powder going in there and then two tablespoons of kale and clay and colloidal oats. And I'll get these all blended in and then we'll come back when the lye solution is cooled and we're ready to get moving forward. So I'm almost ready to get moving forward and I figured I'd show you how I prepare my piping bags uh, to get filled. So I get the tip in there. Sometimes I use the coupler if there's a chance that I'm gonna wanna change piping tips, but otherwise I just cut a little hole in the end of my bag and stuff my piping tip down there. And then what I do is I just take it and twist it a couple of times so it's like that. I lay it on the side of the bag and put my hand down here and grab it so that if I pour the piping, or if I pour the soap batter in here when it's still kind of liquidy, it's not gonna ooze out. That keeps it nice and tight. I've never had it seep out on me. Then I put my hand down in my cup, any cup will do, and turn it over the inside, and there it is all ready to go. So I can pour a more fluid batter in here without leaking and let it firm up to piping consistency. So that's what I have off to the side when I do piping. Um, 
And I just figured I'd show you how I do it. Some people will put a little clamp on there. Other people just wait till their soap frosting is thick enough before they even put it in the piping bags. And that always works perfectly. So, but this is how I do it. I just twist it, grab it, and put it in. <laughs> Pretty simple, but I figured I'd show you how I do it. So, let's get on to making soap. All right, we're back and it's time to get moving forward. I do have the fragrance already in here. I've soaked with it several times before and it soaps like a dream and it smells dreamy too. <laughs> All right, here is my lye solution uh, that has cane sugar, tussa silk fibers, and sodium lactate in there like I normally do. And we will get this up to emulsion, split for our colors, and then get to pouring and I'm gonna be doing a hanger swirl. the next day and it's been about 24 hours and I am going to steam the tops on here. It's not, doesn't have soda ash, it's just a little dull and I want to shine it up. And it's been a while since I've showed the steaming process on my channel. So here's the soap 24 hours later and here is my clothing steamer. This is just the cheapest one I found on Amazon. Any clothes steamer will do and you put distilled water in there and I've got it plugged in, turned on, got to let it come up to a good steam. Don't start till you have a nice you know steam coming out and I will show you how it will just brighten this up. It will make it look glossy and wet and then even after it dries it retains that glossy look. There you go. I don't know if you can see the steam on the camera but it's steaming so I like to tip my soap at an angle. Let me try and hold it where you can see. And just run it very slowly across the top and just go over it as many times as you need to to get a nice glossy appearance. Now, if you do have soda ash, you wanna just go real slow until you see the soda ash literally steam off. But since this didn't have ash on it, I'm just doing it to get a nice gloss. And that is as simple as that. So now, look at how shiny that is. I'm gonna let it sit for an hour and we'll come back and it will be dry to the touch and it will stay nice and glossy. 
All right, we're back, and this is actually the next day after I steamed this. I got really busy yesterday, and let me show you how glossy it remained. So that is the magic of steaming your soaps. Isn't that beautiful? It just kicks it up a notch, and I think it's lovely. And I'm really anxious to get in here and see those swirls. And let me just say that this smells so good. I would just sit here and sniff this bar, <laughs> this scent, I tell you. All right, let's get in here and see what we've got going on the inside. back with the lovely Olga and let's get in here and see how those swirls came out. I think pretty confident we're going to have some soapy patterns to do at the end of the video. So let's just confirm that. Oh yeah. <laughs> love, love, love. Swirly, whirly goodness. Oh my word. And I love these little kisses when they get the little twirls on top. Happy, happy. This soap just does it for me every single time. And it's different every time too. Like sometimes I'm like, well, I'll cheat on my stock photos and keep the pictures from the last batch. And I'm like, nope, because they come out different every time. So I have to retake the stock photos because, you know, you got to have the up-to-date photos. Look how cute those little kisses came out. Oh, these just are delightful to me. These are just delightful. So do you like chocolate scents. And again, chocolate scents are kind of like holiday scents where most chocolate scents have a lot of vanillin in them. And so it's going to turn like a chocolatey brown, which goes with the soap, you know, the theme, but this will not discolor much beyond that. It'll beige up just a teeny bit, but uh, I did put the titanium dioxide in there and it will stay pretty creamy. So these swirls will definitely uh, stay as they are, which makes me really happy. That's one of the things I love about this particular fragrance is that it does not discolor a lot. But I, I do like chocolate scents. Chocolate is a hard note to hit too. You can get like a bitter chocolate or a milk chocolate. You know, there's many nuances to chocolate. So this one does it for me though, this combo. All right, let's keep cutting. Okay, next loaf going in the cutter. So happy with this. So. This is so funny. My children growing up uh, didn't have any obvious or um, bad food allergies. So I never got used to really reading labels or watching things closely because I just didn't have to even think about it. Well, one of my daughters married a really wonderful guy, father of some of my grandchildren, um, but he is deathly allergic to peanuts. So I had to try, or all nuts, I should say, all nuts. Um, a really, really tough allergy. So I, I had to really think about that, you know, and relearn how to approach food with that in mind whenever they would come over. And then my son married his wife and she's just precious. We adore her. Uh, she just had their second little daughter. So it's my, she had my sixth grandchild, which was a little girl. Anyway, love them to pieces. She is allergic to chocolate. And for a girl, doesn't that just kind of break your heart? <laughs> I mean, she is really, really allergic to it. Like if it even touches her lips. They had a beer one time that was like a chocolate type of a beer. And she even touched it to her lips and it made her lips feel fat and fuzzy. So she's very sensitive to chocolate. And um, I felt really sad about that. So I'm challenged for making holiday desserts and things. No nuts, no chocolate. I got to think about it a lot before... You know, you can do all the fruit cakes, you know, different pies and things, of course, but it uh, threw me for a loop and I'm having to remember and relearn some things that I just didn't have to do with my kids growing up. So anyway, allergic to chocolate kind of breaks my heart a little. Let's keep cutting. All right, last loaf. But on the allergy things, here's an interesting thing. And again, I'm not super familiar uh, with food allergies, but my son-in-law 
he can test a food like literally if he takes something and rubs it on his skin he can tell you if there's nuts in it he's so reactive like um if my daughter has nuts to eat she has to go like sanitize her mouth and brush her teeth and everything before she can even kiss him it's that intense so that's uh just quite a challenge i think i don't know why i went down that rabbit trail oh yeah what i was going to say is most of my soaps have almond oil in them but he can use my soaps so i find that interesting um he is super reactive to uh nuts on his skin but he can use my soap without reaction um, and the almond oil is a very small portion, but I, I thought that was interesting. Uh, now my daughter-in-law, she doesn't even want to get close to anything chocolate and I don't blame her, you know, why mess with it? If you know it's something risky, don't even go there. <laughs> so I thought that was interesting. So let me know in the comments down below, if you have allergies or know of somebody who has allergies that are so intense that, you know, even a little bit of almond oil would react for them. I'd be interested to know that. Uh, I have been, I noticed Katie Carson made a line of soap specifically with no nut oils in it. Um, it's her Simplicity line, I think. But that was one of the factors in her new formulation. And it got me thinking about that. Uh, if a lot of people do have nut allergies, it would probably be important to come up with a formulation that doesn't have any nut oils in it. I was just thinking that through. So let me know if you have any thoughts on that. I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions on the whole nuts and allergies and things like that and how you handle that in soap or what you look for in a soap. All that being said, these are going to sit out for a few hours. I'll come in and bevel and stamp. And thank you so much for joining me today. We will definitely have soapy patterns at the end. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.